right guys, just thought I'd show you a really cool new thing I've been working on for any several printers equipped with Clipper. And uh, especially if they've got LEDs, uh, you know, and an adaptation for LEDs, and especially if they are dimmable. So that is rather cool. Um, right, what it is, is we have a selection of files. Some of you might have seen some of them before. There is the how to install Clipper Scratch install with all the uh, copy and paste, basically, uh, elements uh, of how to uh, get Clipper running on your computer. Uh, so it has all the information, all the links, all the commands, everything to do, you know, it's been updated, so there's some new stuff in there. So that's really awesome. Um, also, what we have is a um, Essentials macro collection for new machines, new builds, when you don't quite know uh, which way the stepper motors are gonna go, or you don't know, um, what your pressure advanced settings are or you know you need to do a PID tune all this sort of stuff that you need to do on a new machine it it's kind of it'll all come up in 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 the macros window here that where are we uh Zeb Pro calibrate uh, pressure advanced test mode um stepper buzz cycle they'll all they'll all come up here in your in your macro section and they're all kind of like one click options for, for stuff that you'd normally have to type in a load of commands for uh, so it simplifies uh, the setup vastly so that's really helpful also we have now a an adaptive and kind of smart you know almost kind of smart uh, start code and end um, prints uh, code as well down there but the the start code is the special one um, because that uses parameters that we take from the this the slicer in this instance we're using Prusa slicer um, so that's that and it will bring in things like your first layer temp and your um, first layer bed uh, temperature and the actual layer height of your first layer um, and you'll also notice up here we have another macro which is start variables and what we'll do is you can edit these uh, instead of trawling through all of this and figuring out oh my god what on earth is all this what does this do you just you just change where is it change it here you change it here in the in the variables at the top some of you obviously know variables some of you some of you won't um, but what that basically does is it will give a value for, say, your flow rate or your pre-heating nozzle temperature, you know, and it will transfer those down down to here, look, or, you know, somewhere else, uh, like here. Uh, and it will basically take those values and automatically insert them into the code. Uh, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to scan all this. You don't have to change it all. Um, I mean, there are some stuff, some things you, in here you can change, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, you just got to know what you're doing, of course, because um, you can quite easily mess it up. Uh, for example, you can change the number here, the the, the 90. That that that's changeable, but we'll get into that in a second. Because what that will do is we have um, uh, the variables here for different. Uh, preheating temperatures for the nozzle depending on your filament that you're using you know the if it's a low temperature PLA or a high temperature ABS PETG it will choose between the two of these variables um, and it will do that automatically so you won't have to do anything you just you just set the numbers you want there uh, and it will choose for you um, going by the print file that you send it and you tell it to print um, also there is a um, the mesh here look we need to build a new mesh and call it hot in the printer don't overwrite your default mesh because that's important that still needs to be there um, because what this will do this section 
there are two parts to it uh, and the, basically the printer reads your file and says okay the bed is below 90 degrees here yeah, this is the threshold number 90 there um, so we'll run this script we'll run the, these lines and then other times it'll go okay well it's over 90 degrees so we'll run this one we'll use the hot mesh so it will load either your hotbed temperature mesh or your default temperature mesh which is the lower temperature one normally um, and automatically it will choose which one to use depending on the file you send it and what you're printing it will do it automatically you won't have to do a thing uh, it will just load the correct mesh for you with the correct temperatures um, so yes and also you may notice here heat weight minutes Yes, that's an interesting one because automatically it, each section has its own heat weight minute counter. And this is for you to heat soak your bed and to allow your inductive probe to get up to temperature um, before any kind of, we, we go to homing and do any gantry alignments, all that kind of thing. Or, you know, if you wanted to build a, a, a new mesh or something like that again, but normally you don't do that. But, and that again, is you know it's it's uh that that's set up here in the timers section for each each one you got a low temp timer and a high temp timer um but in order to get those to work you will need to go to this link here it's in the top we're kind of in the open space at the top and download the heat soak timers cfg file here uh, and that will uh, allow these timers that are set here to to run and to work and what we can do is we can we can show you that right now um, because we have a timer start and a timer stop for a manual operation and what you can do is you can tell it to do however minutes the default is 15 minutes but you can even tell it to do one or you can tell it to do 20 totally up to you uh, you just send that and you will see the LED just kind of gently blinking and it will say heat soak timer 0.8 minutes and that will obviously that will update depending on the the, uh, the time you set it normally run in minutes uh, intervals so that's that and you can see on the actual printer that it's blinking away nicely and what you can do you can manually stop it and when you stop it, it says timer finished, a big pop up on the screen. So that's really cool. And uh, just thank you to the original author for that, um, because that, that code has been forked and uh, attributed. Uh, so yeah, and just adapted for our needs. So yeah, that's kind of that really. And also, ah oh, yes, this piece here, this is an interesting piece. Um, what happens here is when the printer has done all this you and if you have a five driver system we'll just mention that quickly if you have a five driver system either an sv07 or a modified sv06 plus or a whatever with five drivers on the board you can uncomment this section and it will run a gantry alignment z tilt adjust and what we have here uh, is rather innocuous little single line down the bottom here is to do with your purge line height and what this will do is it will read your print file and actually set your purge line layer height to the exact same layer height as your print file uh, so they are matched and consistent so that's that there and the encode kind of standard stuff just turn everything off present the print job done kind of deal um, so yes there is all of that there, um, basic settings here, and oh yes, uh, variable chamber temperatures, which is un which is commented out at the moment, but if you uncomment it, if you have a temperature controlled enclosure, that it basically uses a fan to lower the temperature once it reaches a maximum. So this is a maximum temperature for your enclosure before the, the cooling fan will kick in and uh, lower or maintain that temperature 
Uh, so there's an option for that as well. So you can just um, chamber temperature option here. So uh, and that will change the value there automatically as it does for the mesh and the other temperatures and the layer height. So that's basically that. Uh, I, I'm putting it on all my machines. It's absolutely brilliant. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll post links to all of this stuff, um, the GitHub repositories and things like that. Um, any questions, any problems, just shout, let me know. Uh, I'll update the, the code or, you know, make some changes, whatever. So enjoy.